All right, I just finished up reading Dead House Landing by Ian C. Esselmont. I'm going to give you my unedited thoughts immediately following the book, which was just now, and I'm not going to spoil anything. Uh, I love this book. This is a five out of five for me. Uh, I I I think this is the probably the best ENC Esselant uh, Malazan book. You know, right up there with uh, Return of the Crimson Guard, which was in a previous series. But I, I think this book might have been even better. Uh, I, I just loved pretty much everything about it. You know, I'm I've made no uh, qualms about the fact that. Malazan is my favorite all-time series, but just like probably everybody feels, I think Erickson is a better Malazan writer than Ian C. Um, I, I bet even ES, Ian C. Esselmont feels that Erickson's uh, the best out of the two of them. I liked the first series that that Esselmont wrote, the uh, I think novels of the Malazan Empire or something like that. Um, I liked it. I didn't love it. Uh, you know, a couple of the books I thought were very weak. A couple of them very good. But overall, you know, a a good series. This series, the Path to Ascendancy series, which is kind of like a prequel series, but it, it, it's not exactly a prequel because Malaz is such a huge world that it's essentially a prequel series for some of the characters. And, you know, it follows... Um, the 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 two main characters in this are um, Kellen Vett and Dancer, a couple huge figures in this series that don't get a ton of screen time, but they're you know pulling a lot of puppet strings throughout the whole the whole book. And you and by the time the Malazan series starts up, you know their time of rule is done. So you you hear a lot about everybody knows them and has an association with them, but you don't see a ton from them. This book goes back and tells their origin story. And the first book in the series I, I thought was a four out of five. I liked it quite a lot. Um, you know, I, I thought it had some problems with pacing. I thought it had some problems with uh, it, it didn't have that grand scale of events that you come to appreciate in Malazan books. This book solved that problem. This book was a uh, benefited in pretty much every way. The location that they that this book took place was on Malaz Island, which is a a place that we've been before. And that we, you, the reader will have a lot of positive memories about. So it's great to be back to a familiar location um, and learning about the history of, of Malaz Island. And so I think the, lo- the location benefited. The story benefited a lot too. The, the scale was a lot larger. It certainly had kind of a convergence of events and characters by the end of the book that the first one sort of lacked a little bit. Um, I thought there were, there were multiple different plot points in this, all of the, which were very good. The characters in this book is really the strong spot. And I say that because as the book goes along, you start getting introduced to more and more of the characters that you've come to to learn and love about in Malaz and Book of the Fallen. You know, a, a large number of characters to the point where in the first half of the book, I was getting a little worried because I don't always love, in fact, I, I mostly dislike when books try to get this ham-fisted way to show you origin stories of of multiple characters. It, it can be kind of like grown worthy. This one did a very good job at it. You know, you, you're just constantly smiling at learning about these characters and learning about things that make them important. And these huge aspects of the, of the original series that become much more interesting to you as you read this book. I don't want to ruin anything, but there's a couple kind of fun little reveals here about why things are named the way they're named. And it's really entertaining, and it makes you want to go back and read the Malazan Book of the Fallen with this, you know, in the back of your head. I, I think it, you know, as much as I've always wanted to go back and, and read that, I want to give it a, a year or two more before I go back, so I kind of forget a little bit more about it. Um, and it, it, you know, it, it has that huge spark that the original one had for me so much. Um, but I feel like reading these Estimont books is really going to put a lot of those events in better light and and I'll get, get a lot more appreciation for them. So, you know, a lot of people sleep on Esselmont. They say that he's not as good of a writer, which I, I agree, um, you know, but he is very good. It's hard to be as good as somebody that I consider the best. And so to be a, a little bit worse than them, I think is an extremely notable accomplishment. 
and everybody should give Esselman a shot. You know, his books aren't as grand. They're not, the cast of characters is probably half in each of the books as uh, as one of the Erickson books. And so, you know, you don't have that sense in the Esselman books that you need to like almost take notes to, to follow along with what's going on. And, you know, I, I certainly wish that it had this grander scale to them, but the series is trying to do something different. It's not trying to tell these enormous world-changing events. It's trying to tell a specific story about a specific set of characters. And I can appreciate that, and I, and I like these books for what they are. I'm, I'm very excited to go into this third book, uh, Kellen Vid's Reach, although I am a little bit worried because the scores on, on Goodreads drop significantly, and you never like to see that. Um, you know, I think the first book had like a 4.4, the second book had, I think, a 4.5, and the third book, I think, drops down to like a 4.1 or a 4.2, and I'm always worried about that because, you know, scores typically you'll see in these series go up and up and up as the books go along, because the only people reading those books are fans of the series, and so for fans to go back and say, we don't like this third book as much as the first two, uh, you know, I'm not loving that. But I don't always agree with scores. I often do. Um, more often than I'd like to admit, I find that you know my mind does sit with the with the vast consensus of the community, and so you know I, I'm going in unfortunately with high expectations, but I'm going to temper them a little bit so that I don't get disappointed by what I'm assuming is a book not as good as the other two. But um, I'm eagerly anticipating this fourth book in the series. I think even if I don't like this third book as much, I'm still going to be gripped and ready to go for that fourth book, which uh, I think they retitled Forge of the High Mage. It was originally the Gistal, uh, but he recently came out and renamed it. Um, you know, the expected date of that book got pushed out, I think, a little bit. Um, so I'm not sure if that's going to be this year or next year, but I'm certainly going to get it as soon as I can, and hopefully I can get an advanced copy of it so I can give it a review um, and let you know my thoughts on it. So uh, these are my thoughts. If you're a Malazan fan, read this series. Uh, you will not regret reading Dead House Landing when you get to it. Um, that's my review, and I hope you enjoyed it.